Good morning, it's Lauren Lockman from the Tanglewood Wellness Center in Costa Rica. I've been asked this morning to address a simple question, sometimes simple, sometimes not. Why do I believe disease exists? Um, Arnold Arendt suggested that disease was the result of a clogged system, mucus, etc. Natural hygiene has always said that toxemia is the only disease, that every disease that we know of is actually some manifestation of toxemia, of a toxic body. Um, and certainly, I can understand where these two viewpoints come from. There's no question that uh, of the, the three, more than 3,000 people I've fasted, every single person has been clearly and obviously eliminated toxic materials from their body. So we know that, that toxins are real, they're present, there are studies that prove this. Uh, some of you may be aware, I've talked about this before, in a study performed some 10 or more years ago in North America, they looked for 75 persistent environmental toxins, nasty, nasty chemicals, things like dioxin, PCBs, some of the most dangerous chemicals ever invented, and most of which were outlawed in North America decades ago. What did they find? The average person's walking around with more than 50% of these substances. That's 38 or more of these substances in their body in measurable quantity. Okay, so that's some pretty heavy toxic stuff. Um, hygien hygienists have always said that, in fact, the endogenous toxins, toxins created in the body, like waste products from cellular metabolism, okay, cell poop is the greatest source of toxicity in the body. Now, that may have been true when some of these guys were writing 50, 60, 80 years ago. It may be less true today, given the toxicity of the environment that we've created. It may now be that there's more coming in from outside, exogenous sources, from all the garbage people eat, from all the pollution in the air and water, from all the uh, microwave signals, you know, the electromagnetic radiation bombarding us, so many household cleaning products, etc. There's so many things that are affecting us today that they may well now have overwhelmed the endogenous sources of toxicity in the body. And for many years, I would have said, abs and did say, yes, hygien hygienists are absolutely right. It's about toxemia. Now, toxemia is still a huge factor. I would suggest that this is another place, and I've talked about Eret before. Yesterday, I think there was a question regarding Eret. You know, Eret, as I said, was, was one of my first mentors and heroes. Um, his first uh, two main books, Rational Fasting and Mucusless Diet, were very influential for me. And mucus is an issue, but mucus isn't the problem. Mucus is a symptom of a problem. Eric was not right about this, and he was not right about a lot of things. Again, let's give him a break. He was writing you know, 80, 90, 100 years ago. There was a lot less known. The body produces mucus on purpose in order to eliminate toxins. So which comes first, mucus or toxins? Toxins come first, not mucus. Okay? Mucus is not the problem. It's an intelligent response to a problem. If the body's not toxic and we're not consuming garbage, it doesn't make a bunch of mucus. It's not like it's just making mucus for no reason and that's the issue. It's not. Okay, the mucus isn't the problem. The mucus is a symptom of the problem. But I would say, and it occurred to me over really some point over the last 10 years since we started measuring cellular hydration. Okay, in fact, to give credit where credit is due, it started for me when I came across a book probably 15 years ago now, I don't remember exactly when, maybe 20, called Your Body's Many Cries for Water. Anyone see this book? Written by a man named Dr. Batman. His name was actually Dr. Batman Gelage. Uh, he was Iranian, he's, he's passed away, but because his name was so hard to pronounce, everyone called him Dr. Batman. And Dr. Batman, claims to have helped thousands of his clients around Washington, D.C., his patients, eliminate disease was what he said. I believed, I believe, 
eliminate symptoms is probably more, more like it by getting the body better hydrated. And just doing that, he didn't pay much attention to, to diet. Okay? He didn't pay much attention, as far as I know, I mean, I've read his books, to emotions or any of these other factors that I believe are critically important. What he paid attention to is the fact that dehydrated bodies don't function very well. And I believe he was exactly right. Now again, you could say that dehydration is just a symptom, right? Dehydration is caused by poor diet. And you know, it's primarily what we consume. There's other things too that we do, that humans do, that make us dehydrated, but, but diet is by far the largest factor, what we eat and drink. So when the body is dehydrated, nothing works properly, including the body's ability to detoxify itself. Because we have five primary channels of elimination in the body. We eliminate primarily through the colon, through the urinary tract, through the breath, through the skin, and through the mucous membranes. In each of those five cases, nothing moves. Nothing is eliminated or transported out of the body without ample water. Okay, the skin, it's sweat. The breath, it's, it's also going to be eliminated through vapor. Through the urinary tract, urine, there's not going to be much urine. It's going to be much harder to eliminate properly through the kidneys if there isn't enough water in the system. And in the colon, right, I'm constantly dealing with people. I uh, have a client who just broke her fast and had said to me a few weeks ago before we started, I've been eating really well for a long time. I don't think I have a bunch of old stuff in my body. Had her first bowel movement yesterday. Bunch of old stuff in her body. Hard, dry material. Have another guy who um, is fasting with me now who's saying, you know, I'm, I'm clear right now with what's going on. There's a bunch of stuff in my body. I can't get it out yet, but I know it's there. It's always there. I see it over and over again. Almost everybody eliminates this old hard stuff. So nothing, the things that should be moving from the colon being excreted by the body, we've actually seen cases where it's been obvious that this is stuff that's been there for two or more decades, that people have been carrying around this toxic stuff in their body, in their digestive tract, because they can't eliminate it because it's too hard and dry and because it doesn't, didn't have enough fiber. Right? So in the absence of fiber and water, we don't eliminate very well from the colon. Okay? Mucous membranes, same thing. We eliminate stuff through the eyes, uh, you know, through the nose, through, through the vagina for women. What do these things depend on to eliminate? Mucous membranes need to have mucus. Mucus is made mostly of what? Water. water right? So in every single case, without enough water, not much is going to be eliminated. So I've actually come to believe, I mean, clearly, you know, there are multiple factors. If someone eats nothing but garbage, even if they're fully hydrated, when they're not going to be, I mean, the, here's the thing, you know, it's it all interconnected because the garbage that people eat tends to be pretty low in water content, right? I mean, what is high in water content? Fresh fruit and leafy green vegetables. I mean, to maybe to a certain extent, you know, most vegetables perhaps. I mean, most living matter high in water. But we, we're dehydrated from eating all the stuff that's processed and cooked and dried, etc. Well, anyone eating a typical diet or even a, a, you know, maybe a typical vegan or vegetarian diet, even perhaps even an, uh, a typical raw food diet that includes a lot of dried food, they're going to have a hard time eliminating properly because they're going to be dehydrated. And I've seen this over and over again with almost every raw foodist I've measured hydration for. Because eating, even people who eat mostly fruit are often still dehydrated. Well, how can that be true? Simply because people get dehydrated as a result of making poor choices. And most people who live on fruit didn't always do that, right? So, the, you know, there's some kids out there. There are people who've grown up on raw food. Someone who's done that, their body probably works better than some of ours ever will. And, you know, they probably don't have these issues. But most of us 
I mean, everybody here, raise your hand if you ate conventionally for part or much, most of your life, and then later on made, made changes. That's everybody here. So what happens is when we start eating a fruit-based diet, it's not enough to eliminate all the old stuff, which is why I think I've mentioned before in this last session, we had two people. One had been raw. We had many people. We had 35 or 40 people here over the course of the session, but we had two people who had been long-term raw vegans, one more than 10 years, one more than 14 years, both eliminated lots and lots of old hard stuff. Both were very dehydrated when they got here. Very. Okay. So eating, uh, and, and both were eating close to optimally for most of that, that time, 10 or 14 years. That's not enough. So why is this? Well, clearly an optimal raw vegan diet heals the body, right? No. How about a macrobiotic diet? No. How about a paleo diet? No. No diet heals the body. No thing heals the body. Herbs don't heal the body. Drugs don't heal the body. Superfoods don't heal the body. What heals the body? The body heals itself. Every organism is self-healing. Regardless of what people selling the stuff try to tell you, nothing heals the body. Body heals itself. Now, why does every species on the planet stop eating when sick enough or badly enough injured? Because not processing food and not doing anything we don't need to do creates the optimal conditions for the body to be able to heal. By the way, show of hands, how many of you tried using herbs to deal with your issue before you came here? Anyone do that? Three of you have, okay. And, and obviously did not get the results you wanted, okay. Well, report back to us later because I can you know, virtually guarantee you're gonna get the results you want now. Uh, because your body heals in a way that you know, using substances can only suppress symptoms. In any case, so why do some people heal then when they change their diet? It's not the diet's healed them. What, what, what's changed? Why is it happening? Why do some people eliminate their cancer, their heart disease, their diabetes, their arthritis by going to a raw vegan diet or even going to a macrobiotic diet, which most of us here can probably uh, agree is crap. Okay, exactly. So you, um, the answer is because when we improve the diet, when we improve any of the meeting the body's needs in any way, when we do that better than we were before in any way, we're giving the body a better opportunity to cleanse and heal itself. So it's not that the diet healed the body, it's that the elimination of some of the garbage from whatever the previous diet was, that the better diet doesn't include, created more energy for the body to cleanse and heal itself. And so that's what happens, okay? But many people, and many are surprised, many, I mean, I see this all the time, people are like, I don't understand, I've been raw, you know, for three years, and I haven't healed yet. Well, some people are never going to heal on a raw vegan diet because their body is still using a lot of energy to process food. And they may still be dehydrated. There's still lots of things. It's only completely getting out of the body's way. But I would suggest what I've come to realize is that dehydration may actually precede toxemia in many cases. We, people stay toxic because they're dehydrated. If they were hydrated, the body would be able to cleanse and heal much more easily than it can when we're dehydrated. So toxemia is a hugely important cause of disease, but dehydration is often a hugely important cause of toxemia, or at least the, the fact that toxemia doesn't change, that the body can't eliminate those toxins. That's at least partially because most people are severely dehydrated. Mucus is not the cause of disease. It's simply not, okay? Mucus is always created by the body for a reason, on purpose, and is an intelligent response to the conditions in the, the body. The mucus is produced when we make poor choices. The mucus is not the problem. The problem is the diet. Yes, I agree, but, okay. but it comes pretty much from the food. It's not only produced by the body. No. Um, No, no, the mucus, no, the, no, I'm not.
body to save to save the organism, the body takes uh, the toxins and it uh, dilutes it in, into every the whole system of, system of the body. Yeah, I, I I can't vouch for the veracity of everything you just said. Does the mucus uh, ferment? Uh, Etc. I don't know. The body stores the toxins when it's, it's very simple. Okay. Um, your body is intelligent, virtually infinite intelligence. So if you're, if you're walking around with a bunch of PCBs or dioxin or toxins from, of any nature, from any source that your body cannot eliminate, what does it have to do? Store them. There's only two options. Either it eliminates them or it stores them. If it can't eliminate them, it's going to store them. Where is it going to store them? In, in wherever, whatever place it can that's going to be the least harmful to the body. That typically means fatty tissue. That's why it gets stored in fatty tissue. Okay? It's the least harmful place to the body. You don't want the body storing those in vital organs, in, in uh, healthy muscle or other tissue, you want it stored in fatty tissue. That's what the body's going to do, okay? No food has mucus in it. All mucus is produced by the body as an intelligent response to the consumption of something that doesn't belong in the body, whether it's food or some other toxin. The body, and let me, let me restate that. The body creates mucus. I mean, mucus is something we need to have. So, your stomach is protected by mucus, okay? I mean, we need mucus for a variety of different reasons, okay? But the problems that accrue as a result of excess mucus don't come from the food. The food does not have mucus. The body creates it in response to consuming something that we, doesn't belong or creates it in, in response to encountering something. We may not have, have eaten something, but we've taken toxins into the body. The body makes mucus to encapsulate and protect us from something that doesn't belong that could be harmful to us. You eat hot peppers. People think hot peppers are good for you. They clean out your system. Capsaicin burns the tissue. It burns your body. So what does your body do? Every time you eat it, it makes mucus to protect itself. It's not cleaning out the sinuses. It's making mucus. This is silly. I mean, it's not, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. The body heals and cleanses itself. We're not going to make it happen more efficiently or effectively. People think we do. What do herbs do that cleanse the body? They're toxic to the body. The body reacts to them in a way that has the body flushing this stuff out. But do you want to consume something toxic to make the body cleanse? Why don't you just rest and let the body do exactly what it needs to do? Okay? So that's my take on it. Um, you know, again, Eret, I think, uh, contributed a ton to our understanding of health and disease, but there were some, there were some issues. Uh, hygiene, too. I mean, you know, hygienic practitioners and, and experts over the years haven't always been right. I have, for the year, over the years, I don't usually identify myself as a hygienist. One, most people don't know what it means anyway. Two, it sounds weird. I mean, it sounds, oh, what do you clean people's teeth? Right? No. Um, and for me, hygiene isn't about whatever Herbert Shelton and T.C. Fry and other authors, however brilliant they might have been, it's not about what they said. It's about aligning ourselves with the laws of nature and understanding how to apply them to our bodies. To a great extent, they figure those things out and have a lot to share. But in some cases, I believe they're wrong. And I have no problem saying I disagree with Herbert Shelton. Oh, well, who do you think you are? Herbert Shelton was the expert. Well, he's dead. Maybe if he was alive today, maybe he would know what I know, you know, what we know, and would see that maybe he was wrong about certain things. I, I don't really care what people think. Uh, you know, my, my opinion is my opinion, and it's based on my experience and, and my processing. And, and again, I mean, I've learned a ton from these people but I don't blindly accept everything they say, the way many people do. And I don't encourage you to blindly accept anything anybody says. Except me. No, just kidding. No, just kidding. Nobody. Nobody. Okay? Take it in. See if it actually resonates for you. If it doesn't resonate for you, reject it. Now, be careful that you're not rejecting it because it doesn't agree with your pre-existing beliefs. 
I mean, you really have to first be able to get completely clear, like clear yourself, you know, be open to hearing anything, regardless of what you already believe, and see what truly makes sense, what really resonates deeply with you. I'm completely clear, for instance, that distilled water is unnatural and unhealthy, even though most hygienists have always said, drink distilled water. I don't agree. Okay. All right, I hope that's helpful to you. I'll see you next time.